Hello there and welcome back to Let's Play Else Heartbreak. I'm the Orange Genius, but you may, call, you may call me Eric. And in the last episode, we tried to enter the, the lodge or lord lounge, lower lodge probably. And um, we wanted to take the trial, but I got antsy and I wanted to go practice. And we talked to Hank and he's showing us the bas basics of hacking and modifying right now. We managed to make a cube glow, then we gave it to him for him to modify it a little bit, and then we had a staring contest, and I didn't enjoy that part much, so we are going to try and do that again right now. Okay, I'll hurry up a bit, of course. Alright, I want to do something really cool. Okay, I'll try to hurry up a bit. There's no rush, don't worry. And you. Variables are pretty handy thing to, uh, are a pretty handy thing to know. Give me the cube for a second. I'll show you something. Also, I've got a heightened position right now, so that's very convenient. Thanks. I'm just going to change the, change the code a bit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's actually doing it this time. Nice. Hmm. There you go. If you look at the code now, you can see I've added some stuff. Three variables to be exact. Have a gander. Variable red equals 0 0.1, variable green equals 0 0.5, variable blue equals 1.0. Set color red, green, blue. Okay. Did you see it? Yeah, I guess. What's it though? What is... Was it those things about red and blue and stuff? Did you erase what I had written? Yeah, I guess. Look again. I looked. Did you see it? Was it those things about red and blue and stuff? Exactly. A variable can store a value for you. For example, how much red should be in the cube's glow. Mm. Then you type something like this. Variable red equals 0 0.7. Try changing the numbers and see how the cube changes color. Woo! We got it. But I'm going to make it a little funny. Because I'm going to take out the green part. And make it... Make it white. White. I hope that works. I hope that works. Otherwise, I mean, I know this RGB, the RGB thing that's going on, but... Wait, what? Ah. White. Gonna make it glow red for 0 0.9. Gonna take out the blue. Make that... Actually, let's make that 10. 0.5 to make it funny. And I'm gonna add 40 to white. Good lord. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Let's make that 12. That's not much better. That's like significantly less good. Let's make that 0 0.1. Oh god. This cube is horrifying. Let's make that 0 0.4. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. That's, why is that green? Excuse me, sir. You've got an error in your code. 
This is glowing green and I set it too wide. Okay. Zero green stuff. Yeah, I've checked it out. One fun thing to do is replacing a number with a random one. Like this, for example. Variable blue equals random. So you replace the number with the text random, in brackets. Now every time the code runs, the color will be different. I need to try this. Yeah, yeah, go on. Go ahead. Uh, set color instead of blue. Or instead of white, we'll call it random. Brackets. I love black brackets. And then I'll call it random equals two. That don't work. You got it? Nah, nah, I'll try again. Oh no. Wait. Yeah, random is bonkers. Uh, Close the neck. So where was I supposed to write random? Well, you wrote the numbers earlier. Right after the equal sign. For example, variable red equals random. Ah, try again. So, oh no, what have you done? We're gonna change that bad boy, oh, that bad boy back to green. And we're gonna set that bad boy back to green. We're gonna set that bad boy back to random. And that bad boy back to random. Don't forget the, the paraphrase. Blah, 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 blah. That's, you got it? No. So where was I supposed to write the random? We wrote the numbers earlier. Variable red equals random. Can't find function with name random. Like two? Am I, do I have to put that in there? So where was I supposed to th write that? Variable red equals random. I have that. I mean the two, it does not belong there. I'm almost certain of that. But do I have to have this space? I, I need the equal sign. But I probably don't need the space. Hmm. Hmm. I probably need the equals. Is it the, the thingies? This, this blows. Sorta. Something else on your mind? Where should I go from here to improve my skills, I mean? You should find some small things to try and hack them. But keep it clandestine, perhaps do it in your room? You might find yourself in a pickle if the cops catch you hacking stuff downtown. What kind of stuff? Like small stuff you have lying around, I don't know. Okay. What am I supposed to do with all this programming stuff? I don't really get it. 
You have to learn the basics before you can do the really cool stuff. Sure, but what does it matter what color the little cube is? Okay, I think I get it. It's just really difficult. Yeah, maybe you should sleep on it. Or take a walk. Don't. Usually helps for when uh, for me when I try to wrap my head around difficult stuff. Okay, I'll try that. For real? Yeah, for real. So, who's the best programmer in town? What kind of question is that? How should I know? Well, it's not me. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Maybe the woman who is head of the research at the ministry? Who's that? I don't know much. Word is, she's real sharp. Is there someone else who can teach me about programming? Hmm, I don't know. Fib, perhaps? He's a gardener. He would know this. I think he likes to share his knowledge. He's a friendly sort. Look, Sep, I gotta go now. Got lots of work I promised to take care of. And it is 3 a.m. Let's meet up again soon. Thanks for all the help. Hold up, I've got something for you. Here. Here. First part of a book on programming. I have all of it on floppy somewhere around the somewhere in the boat. It's good for when you need to look something up. Wow, perfect. You'll have to find the other parts yourself. Just rummage around. Nice. Is it an easy read? <laughs> Not really. It's crazy dull. But who knows, perhaps you'll like it. I like to read it as I go to sleep. But I gotta run now. Drop by later and I'll teach you some more. Laters. Did he just say that? I hope he didn't. I hope he didn't. I hope you didn't. I can just read that right now. Oh, that is so good. P programming, what a wonderful thing. Ah, the joy of controlling everything and anything through the magical spells of code alone. This manual will teach you all you need to know to become a sorcerer of bits, a master of logic, and the ruler of both data and functions. There are 10 chapters and we recommend you to read all in order since the later chapters built upon previous material. Here's an overview of, of what we will go through. Introduction to problem solving. Variables, math, functions, if statements, arrays, loops, handling text, objects, and methods. The language you'll learn is called SPRAC. We hope that you'll find it fun and enlightening to use. Oh, I wish. Put down. Are we gonna read through the sprag man? There's one too many items in my backpack. Why? Why don't you work? I did all the things. I did all the things. Does there have to be one of these? I don't think there has to be one of those. There doesn't. It should be random in brackets. Why? I'm just not gonna. Remove all has index random. Set color random. Do I have to set it down here as random as well? Set color random. Or 
can't find ver for God quotes. Or for God these bad boys. It's not those. Can't find function with name random. For God quotes, maybe. It said success, but it's not a success. Can convert random to a number. Yeah, I don't. I'm not gonna get in on that. I'm not gonna get. Hi, you're back. Are you? Are you? I was expecting as much. Can't put down crane of training cube there, but I can put it down here. So, are we gonna, you know, not sleep tonight? Because if we're not gonna sleep tonight, I'm just gonna read through a bunch of code. Sprag Manual 2. That's gonna be a lot of dry reading here. Let's read that bad boy. I'm, I'm glad I can read that with my machine. Chapter 2. Variables. R variables are used for naming things. This might seem a little trivial task, but don't be so deceived. The ability to name things is one of the most important things of all in programming. The reason for this is that it allows us to abstract and handle the components of our solution in a symbolic way. For example, instead of referring to your name as a string of characters like Lisa, we can create a variable containing this value. The va variable might be called something like name and could even refer to different names at different points in time, depending on the needs of the program. Here are some examples on how to create variables. Number times 10 equals uh, number x equals 10. String my name equals Simon. Bull, it is Christmas equals false. Okay, so number, the variable, I can set x to 10. String, I can make my name into something I want. Or bool. Is it Christmas, true or false? It's not Christmas right now. Notice the words to the left, like number, string and bool. Those are types and they describe what kind of data we want to put inside the variable. After that comes the variable name. This shouldn't be, this should be something descriptive that explains what kind of thing we have put inside the variable. Next up is the equal sign. This means that we set the value of the variable to whatever is on the right side. Variables can be reset to other values by using the equal sign like this. X equals 10. My name equals Simon. It is Christmas equals true. Now, Simone. Ah, Simone. This requires the variables to have already been declared earlier in the program using the syntax above with a type and a name like number 10, x equals 10, for example. If a variable contains a number type, it can be changed in some additional ways just for convenience, saving a few keystrokes. x plus plus increased by 1, x plus equals 10 increased by 10, x minus minus by decreased by 1, x x space minus equals 20 decreased by 20. Okay, I get that. Pretty straightforward. Did you get up again? Wow, you slept for a whole of two hours. Great, dude. Put that down. That's that's a really not so, you know, it's a, it's a it's pretty... Oh, I don't think it's the most... Simon, Simon, get down there. You're gonna hurt yourself. Oh, good lord. Sprag Manual 3, Chapter 3, Math. Don't let this chapter scare you. You don't need to be a math whiz to do programming. Curiosity and logical thinking will take you much further, trust me. Still, it's often very useful to perform different kinds of math operations in your code. The basic ones are plus, minus, multiplication, multiple, multiplication. Division. These operations can be used in the following manner. Number e ten. Uh, number x equals 10 plus 20. No, number y equals x times 2. Number z equals y minus 1. Now x will have the value of 30, y will have the value of 60, and z will, z will be 59. Make sure you understand why this is and how each variable depends on the other one defined before it. You can also construct more complex compound math statements like the following one. 10 divided by x times z 
plus one. The operators follow regular operator precedence, which means that the multiplication and division will be calculated before plus and minus. To change this, parentheses can be used. I should really get used to that word because that's actually kind of important in the in the English language and it's not within my active vocabulary. Parentheses, parentheses. I call them brackets. Oh well. Different computer systems might have other math operations available as functions. See chapter five. There are some more math operations that are quite handy like the following ones. Less than, less than or equal. Greater than, greater than or equal, equal, not equal. With an exclamation mark, really? They are used similarly to plus, minus, multiplication and division, but return true or false as their result. Okay. Pretty straightforward, nice. I get that part as well. I am glad I can read these this easily. Put down. Manual four. The, what are you thinking? What are you thinking? Do you think this is a break? This is not a break. I'm not cutting you a break. Chapter 4, functions. Didn't it say chapter 5 was going to be functions? I wonder. Functions are the main tool for ab abstraction and simplification in programming. Basically, it gives your code superpowers by making something a self-contained unit and parameterizing it. This all sounds very abstract and perhaps not very useful in itself. So let's check out some examples. First of all, here's how you call a function. Print hello. This will make the computer print the text hello without the quotes to the screen. If it is a computer with a monitor, that is. Okay. In that case, the name of the function was print and the param parameter was hello. By using different parameters, we can make the function behave differently each time we call it. This function might seem a bit strange, at least if you're used to functions in math. The weird thing is that it doesn't return anything. Functions in Sprag don't need to do that, so that's totally fine. We often want to use functions that return values though, so here's how. Number x equals maximum 13 and 10. This will assign the return value from the function max to the variable x. Max takes two parameters and returns whichever one is the largest. In with this case, it is 13, so x will get that value. This will assign the return value from the function max to the variable x. Max takes two parameters and returns whichever one is the largest. In this case, it's 13. So x will get this, that value. I don't understand that. We could also use variables or other functions as parameters to the max function like this. Number x equals max random and 0.5. The random function doesn't take any parameters and returns a random value between 0.0, .0 and 1.0. This random value is compared to 0.5 and the biggest one is selected and assigned to x. Ah. Writing your own functions is pretty simple and looks a bit like defining variables. You could even say that a function is a variable containing a piece of code, so it makes sense to think about it that way. Here's my attempt at writing my own function for calculating the area of a circle. Okay, area of circle, number, area of circle, number radius, return radius times radius times 3.1415, which is pi and area of circle number radius. Radius, what number radius return? Why does it say return? There are many different parts to this code, so let's pull it all apart. The first line explains what kind of value the function will return. A number. 
the name of the function itself, area of circle, and finally, what parameters it accepts a single number called radius. The names used for the parameter is the, is only known inside the function. Someone using the area circle function does not need to know anything about it. Inside the function between the first line and the last one containing the final end, we have the code that will run when this function is called. In that particular case, we multiply radius with itself and with pi, then return that particular result to the, to the caller. So recall return means like number radius calls the number that we declared as radius. Then we calculate it, return radius times radius times pi, and that returns it to the caller, and thus we have the, the area. Okay, makes sense. Makes good sense, actually. Cool. The names used for the parameter is only known inside the function. Someone, yeah, we had that. Inside the function between the first line and the last one containing the final end, we have to return the result to the caller. We had that too. To use this function, we could do something like this. Number A equals area of circle in brackets 0.3. Okay, the variable a would now contain the value of 3.0 times 3.0 times pi, which is something like 28.27. If you want to see if an object has a certain function, you can use the function has the function has function like this. If has function print, print hello end. That's, that's neat. Cool. Oh man, I'm not gonna, I'm definitely gonna continue this in the next episode. For the moment, I hope you enjoyed it. And the next episode is going to contain a lot more reading out. And then we're gonna talk to Fib to see if that was actually, you know, successful if I actually remembered any of this because I have to practice this otherwise I will have forgotten all of that tomorrow and it's quite a, a an interesting experience because I don't know anything about coding I don't know anything about well I do know things about programming but not the programming of software and the computer but the programming of um, optimized process optimization d devices don't I have never heard all that stuff in English. I just do that in German because it's kind of my job. I know how to um, uh, program an S7300 control system to to do what I want it to do. That's pretty easy, though. So this is a little higher on the tier list, in my opinion, which is cool. It's exactly what I'm after. So I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed that read, even though it didn't make for probably a particularly fun experience, but that's not my concern, is it now? Well, it's kind of, but I have a lot of fun with this game, so I don't care much if there's no viewer here because I'm having a time, the time of my life, basically. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I'll see you around. Bye-bye.